everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and today we'll be looking at the Hot Wheels Star Wars TIE Fighter. Now, this is one of the very first Hot Wheels ships I ever bought. It's one of the first ones they ever made. As you can see, there's not a lot of paint on it, which we'll get to. But I'm happy I got it nonetheless. So the TIE Fighter was first seen in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. And then we saw different color variations in different forms. In The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Star Wars Rebels, and so on. Now this particular paint scheme you see here was first featured in The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Instead of it being a light gray like this TIE Fighter right here, they went with a darker blue color, and I sort of like that a lot. So for the height, it's about two and a half inches tall, which is pretty good, and it matches closely to the First Order TIE Fighter. So we do have a lot to cover today. We're going to look at the mold, the paint, put on the stand, compare it, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. So let's get this review started looking at the mold. Now let's begin in the middle. We have our blaster cannons, molded well, transparasteel viewport, pretty accurate and cool. We have our sensors. Pylons are done really well, our cockpit hatch, we have our windows molded there, our ion engine with a rivet, pretty cool, nice little lines in there, little modules, we have our stand connector port, some nice details around that bad boy, pretty cool. Now on the winds we have our copyright crap, we have our solar arrays which uh, uh, I guess we could look at it from this way. I wish they looked more like the First Order ones, but uh, this ain't too bad, I guess. The lines are kind of neat. We have our uh, rods and centerpiece, which I love this. Look at all the little pieces on there. Very nice. Oh no, not too much to talk about. More copyright crap on this side. But, uh, yeah, that's the mold. It's a TIE Fighter. <laughs> so, now that we're done with that, let's take a look at the paint. Alright, looking at the paint of the Hot Wheels TIE Fighter, uh, I do think it is kind of good. Now, it is lacking in some areas because it's one of the first models they ever made. So, what is it missing? We'll get that off the uh, chest first. We don't have red or orange for the blaster cannons. There's no black up here for the cockpit hatch windows. No red in the back near the ion engines. And that's basically all it's missing. Now, what does it have? Well, we have a nice blue color for the winds, the pylons, the cockpit, the engine sections. Everything's with that nice blue, and I like that a lot. Pretty damn good. And then we have black for the solar arrays, and that's done pretty well. Uh, we do have little bits of blue on here. Which kind of stinks, but it's not too bad. Except for right here. I guess I could fix that up, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Now the last colors we have right here. Dark gray and black for the transparasteel viewport. And that is very nicely done. Now the black is not as glossy as we're used to seeing in current Hot Wheel ships. But it gets the job done and I do like it. So, despite not having some colors, I think it is a nice job. So that does it for the mold and paint, so let's put this bad boy on a stand, compare it, and then we'll be done. And just like most Hot Wheels ships, it comes with a cool stand, peg it in the port, hear that click, and you're good to go. Now for a size comparison with the Hot Wheels TIE Fighter, right here we have the Hot Wheels X-Wing, nice ship, new base, and then on the right hand side we have the TIE Fighter from Rebels. Great ships all around. And that does it today for my review of the Hot Wheels Star Wars TIE Fighter. Now I know I'm uh, moving pretty quick with this one, but that's just because I'm very busy doing other projects right now. So anyway, a little recap. This ship is about two and a half inches tall, which is pretty good. And it was first seen in the original Star Wars, A New Hope, and then in various sequels and spin-offs. So what are the pros and cons of this ship? First of all, the detail, it's pretty good. There's a lot of molded sections in there, and I love it. The paint, it is missing some colors, so uh, I'm not going to give it a con for that, and I'll explain later. Comes with a stand, and the price. These used to retail for $3.99, $4.99 in various stores. However, these are everywhere. Dollar Tree in America has them. You could pick them up for a buck. Check your websites, Amazon, eBay, or various stores. And also, Hot Wheels re-release 
release this ship with better paint apps for the Rogue One line. So if you're looking for that, you could also find that on the internet as well or various stores, depending on the luck of it being on the shelf. So why didn't I give this ship a con? Easy answer, it's because this is one of the originals. Basically the prototype of the whole line. Uh, the selling point for me was the very thin winds. I've never seen anything like that before. The titaniums were metal and thick. If it's in the collection or just in my hand, it's a very important ship because not only is it cool, but it shows how the company, Hot Wheels, has grown and how far the line has come. You look at this and then you look at various other ships they have now with more unique molds and paint schemes and you just go, wow, how far they've come. And I think that is very important, uh, not just for the toy line, but for the history of the line as well. So I recommend this ship for anybody who's a fan of TIE Fighters, The Empire, the original Star Wars trilogy. It is a very nice model. So that's everything I have to say about this ship today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thanks again so much for watching. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.